Wow, it's so fast. Do you believe that SpaceX has revealed Starship version 3? Well, this is the question even the company's founder Elon Musk, I guess, won't be able to answer. Because he and SpaceX always create breakthroughs time and time again to make rocket enthusiasts like us overwhelmed. From the Falcon rocket line to the world's largest and most powerful rocket starship, from exclusive reuse methods to operational approaches that we've only seen in sci-fi movies. So, what's next? Don't wait any longer. Meanwhile, just two months ago, we saw his announcement about the end of version 1 and the fact that version 2 was coming next couldn't believe how fast they went. So, what is special about this new version? Let's find out in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. S SpaceX always knows how to please its fans by actively sharing information surrounding its rocket development process, especially Starship. As a result, SpaceX fans like you and I sometimes believe we know enough about Starbase's day-to-day -day operations. However, the reality is a little different, as SpaceX still keeps a lot of information to itself and what they show us may just be the tip of the iceberg. See what Elon Musk tweeted in November last year. In a tweet posted on November 24, 2023, Elon Musk shared a photo showing four Starship upper stages standing vertically at SpaceX's Boca Chica facility in South Texas and saying the quartet will be the last of V1. Version 2 comes next, marking the next phase in the company's iterative development process. While the world is discussing enthusiastically how will Starship Version 2 look like, the announcement of its successor adds an extra layer of surprise to the space community. Crazy to think how quick the Starship team was when version 1's second flight test was just completed two months ago, but they now enter a much higher level with Starship's third version while the second version remains X-Factor. In the SpaceX company talk recently, Elon Musk talked proudly about the miracle things that his company had made. As of saying earlier, we're a rapidly reusable reliable rocket. Yeah. And we've got a block, it's sort of a version 2 ship that will be more reliable, better performance endurance. We've got a version 3 ship design that will stretch that the be even taller probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done, maybe 150 in the end in length. According to Musk, version 3 will be the largest rocket ever, taller than its two predecessors. Honestly, it's not surprising that Starship versions will get higher and higher in the future. He also hinted at this in a tweet last September likely to be 10% to 20% longer in later versions. With 150 meters in height, the V3 will be higher than V1 up to 25%. Based on the previous speculations, version 2 will be stretched to 10% to get 132 meters in fully stacked status, meaning V3 will be higher than V2 by roughly 20 meters. Because Elon Musk did not go into detail, we can draw educated speculations based on the progression from Starship V2. Version 2 is poised to feature nine Raptor engines, a notable increase from the current six engines. In version 3, we haven't heard anything about expanding the diameter. Starship is already the world's largest rocket, standing at a height of 121 meters. The rocket gives us some majestic sense, resembling a skyscraper made up of 40 stacked African elements. However, for Elon Musk, that's still not enough. He has even greater ambitions for his darling. We've got a version 3 ship design that'll stretch even taller, probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done, maybe 150 meters at the end in length. So yeah, be even taller than it is currently. With a height of 150 meters, V3 will be 25% taller than V1. Based on previous speculation, Version 2 is expected to be extended by 10% to reach 132 meters in a fully stacked configuration, meaning V3 will be about 20 meters taller than V2. Honestly, Elon Musk or SpaceX hasn't provided an in-depth analysis of these two newly announced Starship generations. However, with completely new names assigned, significant changes may be anticipated. Some potential changes could involve the implementation of new types of domes, possibly leading to modifications in the size of the domes at the front and rear, optimizing space for fuel storage or increasing the capacity of the payload bay. 
In terms of payload capacity, the new version of Starship will increase its lift capability from about 100 tons to over 200 tons per flight according to Musk. To grasp the scale of this achievement, one can imagine that. The cargo capacity of Starship is equivalent to the payload capacity of three Saturn V rockets, which weighed 118 tons in orbit and about 12 times that of a space shuttle. In terms of fuel, an extended version of Starship may also increase the fuel storage capacity. Essentially, the advantage of scaling up a rocket lies in the favorable relationships between the weight of an empty rocket and the volume of fuel it can carry. As the rocket size increases, the volume of the fuel tanks can grow significantly without a proportional increase in empty weight. We're talking about Starship Stage 2, but to maintain this ratio, the Super Heavy also needs to have a greater height. This allows for more efficient fuel utilization. Additionally, playing with engine size and optimizing the thrust to fuel consumption ratio contributes to these benefits. By increasing the number of engines, you can achieve a better balance, making it more efficient to lift heavier payloads. For instance, if one engine can lift 100 pounds of payload, three engines working together can lift more than 300 pounds. This is because multiple engines can be tuned to work in concert more effectively than a single engine alone, maximizing the overall efficiency of the launch. That's why both Starship V2 and V3 will see an increase in the number of Raptor engines, coupled with progressively more powerful variants of the Raptor engine. As of now, the Raptor V3 engine for Starship's V2 is SpaceX's latest version, producing a thrust of approximately 269 tons, representing an 18% improvement in power compared to the Raptor 2 engine. Surely, next, they'll research and produce Raptor V4 for Starship V3, and it's hard to believe just how much more powerful it could become. The decision to scale up and enhance the capabilities of SpaceX and Elon Musk for the Starship rocket is truly an ongoing effort. This is certainly not beyond SpaceX's capabilities, as some might think. Therefore, the possibility of the already giant Starship becoming even larger is a story that SpaceX is undoubtedly capable of realizing. So let's assume the number of Raptors remains at 9. Thus, to lift up a bigger mass, SpaceX might introduce a more potent version of the Raptor engine to further enhance payload capacity. Along with teasing a Starship V2, Musk also highlighted the development of its next-generation Raptor 3 engine, which he said would have a higher ISP than the Raptor 2 generate 20% more thrust and achieve 350 bar chamber pressure, 2 and 69 tons of thrust. Thanks to 269 tons of thrust, each Raptor V3 SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy is expected to generate 19.5 million pounds in total at liftoff, nearly three times the power of NASA's Saturn V. Saturn V is the rocket that propelled NASA Apollo astronauts to the lunar surface. It generated 7.6 million pounds of thrust. However, when Saturn V retired, NASA developed a new rocket called the Space Launch System, which generates a maximum thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever when it lifted off in November 2022. But see how SpaceX Starship humiliated the SLS during two recent flight tests with its capability to generate twice the thrust of the SLS. Additionally, Raptor V3 will be reliable enough not to require a heat shield. For Raptor's regular variants, the heat shield is used to protect more delicate things like wiring, plumbing, etc. from the heat of the exhaust coming out of the engines. These covers, which are made of stainless steel, also used in many areas beneath the vehicle, which could be related to the extra heating in that area. Because of the material's properties, as well as its wide coverage and engine parts, the heat shield plays an important role in adding mass to the Raptor engine. So how did SpaceX remove the heat shield without harming the engine itself? Elon explained that, if we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect rest and delete engine heat shields. Oh, really? Do you think that Raptor V3 can be reliable without the heat shield? Share your opinion in the comments. Then, the appearance of the more powerful Raptor V3. Also leads to another question. Does the Raptor V3 consume more fuel or not? In other words, how much propellant is needed for a bigger rocket, namely Starship V3? Theoretically, six engines require 1,200 tons of propellant, 
while the amount of propellant for nine engines is 1,800. This principle also works for Starship V3's upper stage, no matter which type of Raptor it uses. And, the boosters use Raptor 3 engines, but will likely not see a lot of change apart from that. In short, this third generation of rocket might not consume more propellant than V2. Or even Raptor V3 will most likely be more. Optimized to save more energy, thereby decreasing the necessary amount of propellant. This makes sense because Elon's purpose to increase the rocket's size is to expand the rocket's payload capacity, not carry extra propellant for the additional engines. He confirmed that. Starship is intended to carry a lot of people on tens of thousands of flights, so needs to be extremely reliable over time. It will be. Tens of thousands of people is an extremely impressive number. Much larger than the currently announced number of 100 people. It explains why expanding payload capacity is always a priority for the company. That's why SpaceX is expanding its starbase. With SpaceX's COO Gwynne Shotwell stating that the factory will be capable of producing a new starship every 72 hours. SpaceX is already working on a massive star factory production. Facility to increase starship production, meaning that once it's fully up and running, SpaceX can immediately begin mass production of Starship V3. Continuous developments and upgrades are necessary for an unprecedented program like Starship. SpaceX is also constructing a second Starship launch pad at Starbase in South Texas. We're going to be launching a lot and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we're launching from another tower, so two towers is important, Musk said. For Artemis missions, SpaceX will likely need to fly Starships nearly as often as they're launching Falcon 9 rockets multiple times per week, to aggregate methane and liquid oxygen propellants into a storage depot in Earth orbit. Then, the human-rated Starship lander will launch into low Earth orbit, link up with the depot, and receive its full propellant load to head for the moon. NASA's astronaut crews will depart Earth on NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, then link up with the Starship lander and orbit around the moon. Starship will ferry two of the four-person Artemis crew from Orion to the lunar surface, then back to Orion for the ride home. In summary, during the next period, Starship only needs to perform well in its third flight, which includes achieving orbit and demonstrating the ability to transfer fewer than the Starship tanks. This would be a technical leap similar to Portugal's. Coraval, not to say the applications will be identical, but if successful, it will not only open up the possibility of closer access to our solar system than ever before, but also offer much more. Only time will tell, but it's bound to happen. The entire process of developing planning space missions will be revolutionized as the cost of a space utilization decreases by a factor of 100. In fact, the entire concept of how we think about space exploration will have to change. SpaceX will not be alone in providing this service. Other players will attempt to join in either to get a piece of the pie or because they require a different solution, different types of fuel, different functionalities of Starship Pace 2. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.